What's going on guys, Axiom here, back with another video. Today we're gonna be looking at pan crop inside of After Effects and how I do pan crop within Fortnite and my Fortnite edits. This is my first part to a third part series. I'm gonna be doing pan crop, cinematics, and then flow all around. Because pan crop and cinematics have something to do with flow in general. So with that being said, let's get into it. Before we get into Fortnite clip pan crop, we need to show you the graphs you will be using throughout this tutorial. So let's get into this. I just made a circle. All right, first thing you gotta do, turn motion blur on. If you don't have this column, go down here to the bottom left of your After Effects. Click this, put a motion blur up here. Make sure this is colored. Then turn motion blur on for whatever layers you want. Okay, we just got a negative linear slope with this circle. So nothing too special. This is just basic keyframing. So what you do now, easy ease both of these keyframes, either hitting F9 or right click on them. Keyframe assistant, easy ease. So now it should look something like this. And this is what it'll look like in graph editor. So now you get these handles to work with. Now you can customize your graph and all of that stuff, right? And I'm going to explain how this works real quick. If you haven't learned about graphs and math or anything, I'm just going to tell you how they work right now. Or at least I'm going to tell you how they work in After Effects right now. It's just an easy ease graph the left side this right here this left side this left side is the percentage of the scale we're working with and this can vary between what effect and going left to right it is the time in which the value occurs so as you can see at zero frames if we change this to frames by control clicking you can see at the zero frame we are at whatever this is 594 so i like frame 14 371.7 and as you keep going you just get down to 100 these are all individual spots in the graph where value occurs at a specific time so we're going to use this to make graphs that do exactly what we want. This is what is called a negative exponential graph. That's just a math term for it. This is what it looks like essentially. There are many variations of this, but this is just the sharpest one. Without going under 100, this is a negative exponential graph and this is a positive one. It has a positive slope and it's going up instead of down. So just like that. Ways you can customize this graph, right? So if you want to see more of it scaled up, right? Um, You can move this a little bit to the right or however much you want that much. So something like this. This is pretty much straight with the line we made and this is going to do exactly what we want. That looks smooth and it's also visible to the eye towards the end that it's still moving down right we got this graph we have this positive exponential graph and now we have this graph i usually just call this an s graph because it's, it looks like an s i guess this is what it looks like going that and this graph i use for so many things within my edits this is one of the most versatile graphs you can use this is used for motion graphics everything and the time reverse the keyframes you just keyframe assistant time reverse keyframes and now you're going from large scale to bottom that's just the opposite of it ways you can customize this graph do whatever you want so first off what you can do add a keyframe in the middle of these keyframes you want these keyframes this one and this one to be evenly spaced so the middle is on a frame hold alt click one of these and see how the slope in the middle goes with this line now so now you can make this middle part very smooth and how you want it and what you think would fit so just like that we made a really really smooth pan crop from small scale to large scale and just like that you don't need this keyframe unless you want to be exactly precise how you want it you can just put these in and we'll give it the same kind of smoothless smooth it'll give the same kind of smoothness in the middle but those are the main graphs that i use within my edits pretty much everything so i'll be back when i've synced a clip and once i'm done we're gonna be doing some pan crop within the clip So that's what I just synced up. If you're wondering what my sync graphs looks like for some reason, it's what my first one looks like. And this is what the shot sync looks like. This is pretty basic. And now we're going to be adding pan crop and shake because shake is kind of connected to pan crop in a way, but probably going to have sins before this if I was making this an actual edit, right? What I do every time, bring up scale with S, R with R, and P with P. Then I keyframe it on the first thing, then hit U to open all of them. So we're probably not even going to use rotation or anything on this regular part of the clip. So, and we're going to toggle motion blur before we do anything. So, we're gonna go about to like 500 and then we're gonna go back down to 100 all right we're just gonna take a keyframe by keyframe okay i'm gonna pull this one all the way to the left something i didn't say while making this hold shift when clicking this one you can lock it to the x-axis so it doesn't go where you don't want it to be and this one all the way down and then we're gonna pull this one to the right a little bit just to give that extra timing and extra motion blur between these two keyframes and I'm going to show you good motion blur settings real quick. To check your motion blur settings within your AE, go to these three bars, go to composition settings, then go over here to advanced. Right here, you see your motion blur degrees and stuff. So these are all my settings right here for pretty much everything. So just 180, 0, 16, 128. Then hit OK. Out, in, out. Pump, pump, in, out, shot. Oh, we need to do, we need to move this keyframe more over here because I'm going to use the S graph to um, scale up between over here and over here. So I'm going to move this one about in the middle of these two keyframes. Then how many frames is this? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. 
So about 10 frames. We can go 11. And then I'm going to scale this up to about 107. Nah, that's too much. I don't like zooming in a ton on Fortnite because then the HUD gets all scrunched up and it looks like you're just too zoomed in. And Fortnite's already zoomed in quite a bit because the FOV is kind of low. So we're just going to go like 105 probably because it'll go past once we once I show you. Okay. And then we're going back down. So go in the middle of these and then go back to 100. We'll do this before we move on. As you can see, you can barely see where these keyframes are. What you want to do, click this auto zoom graphite. I also forgot to say just alt scroll wheel into your graph to zoom in vertically so it's not colored so our beat is right here and what we want to do we want to make this go over here and what i like doing i like hitting alt and dragging this down a tiny bit just so it has this constant movement with it so it's not just staying still so then you get more sense of flow in your edits and then i also hit alt on this one bring this that's our beat so as you can see this bar will not go past this keyframe so what you have to do is move this one just like that and now we're gonna do this one so go to this one put your scrubber right there move this over move this back and i'm gonna make this one a little bit smoother in there this is pretty much what our graph looks like start up there and we come down here and this is what it pretty much just looks like I don't like that. So I'm gonna move this up about 101, and then I'm gonna pull this down. We may have zoomed in too far, so I'm just gonna go to like 300. I'm just trying to fix this right now because this right here, it looks a bit weird. So I'm gonna put this down, this out. Okay, we fixed it up a little bit. Out, in, out. And then with these right here, we're going to put this one up, maybe about 101, and then Alt click. And so we get this sense of constant, just down. So you may be saying this graph looks a bit weird, and <laughs> it sure does, but like, this is just the way I do it, so. All right, so now we just have like two screens pumps and the way i do screen pumps i make this 100 go two frames out 102 maybe i'm thinking 102 maybe we'll go 103 but so you have these two frames and i just easy ease them go to the next two frames where you want to screen pump or do whatever and then i put those just like that and then so we have two screen pumps right now okay a trick to pan crop right watch the hud because if you're looking at the middle of the screen you're not going to be paying attention to the pan crop even though that's where the viewer will be looking most of the time you're not going to know what your pan crop is doing unless you look at the hud do an experiment real quick this first time watch the middle of the screen now watch the health bar it, it makes the world of a difference now you know what your pan crop is doing how we did over here we went in the middle of these two time remapped keyframes and we put this because we're gonna make another s curve what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go like three frames back and then i'm gonna go over here i'm gonna go up to about 107 and i'm gonna go back down 101 and we're gonna end it off 100 and this is how it looks right now and put this one down back to 100 because this is a second screen pump make sure you f9 that our b is right here now we're gonna use these and just try and meet in the middle alt click this is going down, it's going back in, and now we're done with that one. This one is pretty evened out, so we can just go all the way and all the way that. We can just go like that, and like this is a bit too sharp. Oh, even slant that up more. This is our complete clip editing graph. And now we're on to the shot. Okay. This part is very important if you want good impact. My impact layer pretty much have transform and twitch and S shake or whatever shake I'm using. So for this, I usually go three frames back. One, two, three. I'm just using the page up key. Then I go up to like 200. That may seem like a lot. You really don't see it that much because it's so quick. You won't even see it. Maybe 20 frames and then go back to 100. And then I just make a little curve like this. Put that all the way to the right. Jake just makes everything more satisfying to watch. We're gonna make some rotation shakes. So click on rotation and then go about, mm, let's try two. And let's go to three, go three frames and negative 1.5. Four, four frames back to zero then i'm gonna easy ease all those and this is actually a pretty good rotation shake for this all right so that's a decent tilt shake for the sake of keeping this short for you guys let's move on to pan crop on this so let's bring up scale keyframe this we're gonna keyframe it at like 110 go to our keyframe after in between go down to 100 and go in between about 108 and then go just straight in however much you want so the middle of our thing is about right there that's where the timer map keyframe is do another s graph and then pull this down then our next keyframe right there it is we're gonna use this one and then bring this down we want this to be really sharp add some little flow there here's what i've been thinking over the past few edits i've made right if you put the keyframe one frame before when the clip cuts off you won't get any motion blur but if you don't then it won't go all the way in but what i've been doing i've just been putting it right here and then going back and putting this a little bit over there so it gets just a little bit more zoomed in and you get a ton of motion blur with it i guess so 
These seem just too, too small. You need more impact. And go up. All right. Another trick you can do, Y position with transform. And this is pretty simple. So what I just did, I just made these keyframes. Went two frames, five, 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 one, two, three, four frames. Five, 25, one, two, three, four, five frames. Then five, 50, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight frames. And back to five, 40. And then if we easy, easy, you'll see that it looks pretty clean with that simple little position Y shake thing. So you get this really smooth shake with it. So if we copy and paste this little Y rotation shake, a couple beats and maybe this one and then we also copy this one and paste this right here and take off the scale that back to 100 and just leave the little rotation shake this maybe a couple frames out Let's just quickly add a CC and RSMB and show you guys how this looks with the final result. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys learned stuff. If you have any questions, comment below. Tell me what I can improve on. Tune in next time for cinematics. I don't know why I'm asking for 1K likes. I don't know why, but I feel like we can do it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. It's been your boy Axiom. Peace.